Hi everyone and welcome to Nee's Art Journaling channel. Today we're playing in my uh, junk journal again and we're being inspired by Little Raven Ink. So this is a junk journal that you saw in a previous video that was made by Chrissy Mannix for me, which I'm loving using. And it's made up of lots of different types of papers. You can see some are already pre-printed, gel press prints and so on. And it's quite thin paper. It's certainly not watercolour paper, but once you put watercolour on it, it gives this lovely, crispy, delicate texture to the paper. So I'm using the Jane Davenport Brights palette and I'm just slapping on watercolour in lots of random ways. Not being too particular about it, but I'm just wanting to keep the page nice and bright. Trying to pick up some of the colours from the page that's already got some printing on it. So just going in with lots of pinks and blues and greens to brighten it up. And then going in with my heat tool to dry it all off again. And you can sort of see it as it dries, it's sort of buckling and um, changing somewhat. It's, it's got a really interesting texture to play with. So now I'm going in with my um, handmade watercolours and these watercolours are made by Rachel Beth Designs. If you haven't come across her watercolours before, um, she's on Instagram and has an Etsy store. The pans are amazing quality and the colours are just so saturated and beautiful. The Hello Spring, which you can see on the page, that's where the pink and that yellow came from, are probably more like a gouache. They're um, a little bit opaque, they're not as translucent as normal watercolours, but they sit on top of watercolours beautifully. One of my favourites is the one I'm using now, which is called Copper Candles, and the uh, metallic shine in that is just unbelievable, as are all her other metallics. So. I haven't got much experience with watercolours, I have to say, but um, I came across these watercolours through James Luke Burke Creative um, and seeing him use them, uh, and I've just fallen in love with them, so uh, I'm a little bit addicted to it, which is a bit of a shame in Australia because it's so expensive to get them shipped out here. So this page is all about just playing with some different bits and pieces. Now I just re recently received some of these squid inks which are a hybrid type ink. It's kind of like a dye ink but it dries permanent and it, it's waterproof and bleed proof. Uh, so I just wanted to have a go at it and um, one of my IT friends asked how the white work, would work with um, a fine stamp and it actually came up really really well. Um, I'm white ink pads are a bit of a unicorn, you ne they're never quite as opaque as you want, but this one actually came up quite well. I was really impressed by it. The other thing I was really impressed by was the metallics. The gold is a little bit uh, yellow, probably to say, but it comes up really, really well on dark surfaces and it does have a beautiful shine, as does the, the silver, but the, the gold certainly more impressive than the silver. So this is just me playing in the background making lots and lots of marks, trying to use as many bright colours as possible. Uh, so this is some of the pinks in the, the squid ink and I think I used some of the other colours as well. I'm not 100% sure if I like the shape of the the ink pad. It's, it's good, it fits in your hand okay, but and you can tap it over your stamp, not an issue, but I, I, I suppose I'm old school and I'm a bit used to having square ink pads. So. That's where I sit with that one. My junk journal, I have decided I'm going to use it as a bit of an homage to Little Raven Ink. I've got all these printables, as you could see in that bag, um, and I print all her collage sheets now onto sticker paper. I just find it so much easier to do that. So I run the sticker paper through my laser printer and pop it down onto my page. So I just need to peel it off and stick it down. It's that simple. No extra adhesive and I know it's stuck down really firmly to the page. And what I found with the, the sticker paper is that with the laser printing it gives it an almost a resist so when you see me later go over it a little bit with watercolour it sort of beads up on, on the laser printing. Um, it doesn't soak into the page. It is a matte uh, sticker paper so it should soak into the page in theory. Um, but it, it's not. So I don't know if that's the quality of the sticker paper or because it's gone through a laser printer, but that, that's what I found at the moment. 
Now the sticker paper I'm using is um, a Unistat sticker paper, it's A4 and it's the only reason I'm using that one is it's what was available in my local news agents. I don't have a big stationery store near me so it's what I've got and I was a little bit desperate to use sticker paper so I just went in there and got that. I'm sure you could get cheaper or better quality but this is what I'm using and it's working fine for me. So on this page I was just playing around. I really love um, the monsters that Courtney draws and just the colours that she uses are just beautiful. And it's really been encouraging me to use those really bright colours in the background as well and to do all that mark making in the background. Because they're such strong bold images it holds up to having a very busy background. So this is where I'm going in with the watercolour next to the monsters and you can sort of see that it resists up to where you're working on, it doesn't go over it. So I was also using a Stabilo oil pencil just to put a little bit of shading around the monster, blend it into the page. I hate calling them monsters because they're just too cute to be monsters. You can see on the right hand side that some of the uh, Stabilo oil pencil has gone on to the uh, monster <laughs> but it, it's easy to paint over so now I'm actually just painting straight over it with some watercolour and it's just sitting on the surface um, really nicely so this one's um, called a vanilla bean from the happy birthday uh, range and again you can sort of see how opaque even though it's a watercolour and it is you can get it very translucent don't get me wrong but it is opaque enough to sort of cover over and, and hide little mistakes like was on that page. So now I've sort of done my background I'm just wanting to add a little bit more to it. So I break out the drama sticks which are from Jane Davenport. They're a really soft oil pastel. They're actually dry waterproof so you can go back over them and rework them. They are very very soft. Uh, they're beautiful to work with and I love the colours. The one really frustrating thing I have, and I don't know if it's just me or if it's anyone else, I really struggle to get the lids off. Uh, they're, they're jammed on really, really tight and I know that's to protect the, the pencil itself, but it's really, I'm really struggling to get the, the pen lids off. The other thing I found is it does, when you buy the drumsticks, it comes with a sharpener. And you can see here what happened was when I was sharpening it, oh, the whole lead broke off and I had to resharpen it again. So I got the point left. So instead of wasting it, what I did was go to another page in my journal and to rub it in to make circles. Now I know that's going to dry waterproof, so I can do a resist over the top of that. I can do a whole heap of watercolour over the top of that and that blue will stand out and not bead over the top of it. So this is the quill pen it's got a fancy name I don't know what it is basically it's a brush pen with a uh, waterproof ink on it it's very flexible very easy to use um, it bends really easy and I've been finding it great for doing mic making or doing borders on my pages all I'm doing now is quickly flicking up through my iPad to find some quotes about monsters now <laughs> When you're going to look for quotes, I suggest you have some good keywords in mind. I didn't want a depressing, dark, fiery type uh, quote about monsters, but of course, because I just put in monster quote, that's what I ended up with. But I ended up finding this little quote in, in the niche of, of Pinterest, which says, um, everybody, even monsters, needs a little attention once in a while, which I really liked because that applies to so many things and so many things that we we call monsters you know in in my everyday teaching job those kids that struggle in classrooms sometimes are the kids that need attention because they're acting out because something's wrong uh, and it's a good way to stop and think they're not being monsters so to speak air quotes there um, they need some attention, something's not right in their little world or something's happened in their world, they're, they're acting like this. In my own life, um, you know, if I'm not feeling well, if I know I'm sort of going into a bit of a, a spiral, 
that's my monster telling me it needs a bit of attention. Hang on a minute, not everything's right here. Get on top of this. So I, I liked that this quote had lots of different meanings for me and lots of different layers for it. And it's not a bad thing um, to, to give the things that are bothering you, you in life a bit of attention and to work out why they're bothering you and to see if you can fix it. So what I'm going in and doing is um, a technique I use for most of my lettering because I'm not really a letterer is I go in with my thick sharpie and just block write my quote and then I go back over and then you know enlarge it making some bits thicker doing the flares in the bottom of the letters and um, just making it look a little bit more interesting one of the really finishing things I suppose for quotes like this is to put the shadows on it because it really pops it out of the page. So I'm just using a chameleon pen which is an alcohol based marker. Any sort of black marker will work. I tend to use a dark grey. Um, I sometimes find black just too stark so just having that little bit of warmth on the page gives you that shadow that you need but it doesn't make it look you know overtake what you're doing on the page. And you notice while I was doing that, I just checked out on the page before to see if it bled through very slightly. Um, it, I could see the sort of shadow come through, but it didn't take away from what was on the page before. So I would suggest if you're working on really, really thin paper and you're a bit worried about that happening, check out any alcohol markers on a test piece of paper first, just to see if you're happy with it coming through on the other page or not. Once I've finished that, just with a fine Posca pen, I'm just going in and doing some journaling about what that quote meant to me. And I found that this page is really therapeutic to do uh, and getting it all out. I've been in a bit of a creative funk. This journal has been a godsend for me in that way because it's, um, it's just so bright and cheerful and happy and small. It's only a four, five size. So it's, really easy to do something quite quickly um, it's just working perfectly so I hope that this page uh, was interesting for you to see and you can follow the process and please check out Little Raven Ink and all her wonderful goodies and her beautiful artwork on her channels thanks for watching and I'll see you next time bye